This is the extension video for Unit 8. We're going to be finding the area under this equation, uh, this curve y equals negative x squared plus 10x minus 20, all the way from that number 3 to 7. And we're going to be approximating it by using a trapezoid. So you can see we're tracing out a trapezoidal shape there. Each of the bases of that first trapezoid is the same thing as a height of the function. So in order to figure out the height of or the length of those bases, we want to investigate the y value <clears throat> at the 3 and the 4 mark for this particular instance. So let's say we wanted to find the y value when x is 3. That's just a simple substitution. Negative 3 squared plus 10 times 3 minus 20. And simplifying that out, we get negative 9 plus 30 minus 20 which all simplifies out to just be positive 1. And that makes sense, because that's the height of that first red base that you see there. All of the heights of these trapezoids that we're going to be drawing, since the trapezoid's facing up instead of horizontally, those are going to be the width of the one unit. And what we've circled here over in the algebra view window for our GeoGebra is that the, this 1, then 4, then 5, then 4, then 1 again are the base lengths. There's the 1, the 4, the 5, and the 1. And you can almost count it on the grid in this case, but in GeoGebra it also gives you those segment lengths when you connect the points. So when we put the four different trapezoids together side by side, I hope you can see that each of the inside bases, that's the four, the five, and at the values of four, five, and six there, are actually going to be used twice because they're used in the trapezoid to its immediate left and also to its immediate right. So if I want to add up all of the areas of these trapezoids, I can come up with a new formula that is the height of the trapezoid divided by 2. That's part of the trapezoid formula no matter what. But it's base 1 plus 2 times base 2 if we think about those as base 1 and 2 like you would draw in your trapezoid. But then let's extend that to using a base 3. Now that's a middle base, so it's going to be used twice. Plus twice base 4, and then plus base 5. So at this point we can start substituting in some values that we know. We know that the height is 1, that's the width of each of those intervals, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 4, 5 to 6, and so on. So it's 1 half outside the parentheses. And then we can go ahead and put in the base lengths that we know. So 1 plus 2 times 4 is the height of base 2, plus 2 times 5, plus 2 times 4, plus uh, back to 1. Notice there's a s somewhat symmetrical uh, look to this because it is a quadratic equation and par parabolas are symmetrical. So if we simplify that a little bit more, we've got our 1 half on the outside, and then inside the parentheses we have 1 plus 8 plus 10 plus another 8, plus another 1, and that's half of 28, or 14, is the approximate uh, value that we get by just adding up those trapezoids underneath. The question is, is this an over or an under approximation of the actual area? And so to do that, we're going to actually have GeoGebra sketch in our trapezoids. You can do this by hand too, but i um, giving you some animations here to hopefully help you see it a little clearer. So again, we're just going from 3 to 7. So I want to draw in the 
dividing the area into sections by drawing in those heights, which are the base lengths. So there's those sections. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to connect from corner to corner there, make a straight segment to create the tops of the trapezoids. And so since the red area is underneath that blue curve, the lines are all underneath the blue curve, we can agree that the 14 is actually less than or is an under approximation for what the exact value should be. So the question is now, what is the exact value, the actual value for the curved area, not just kind of slanting it off with those um, trapezoids. We're missing that kind of half moon shape little piece um, curved area underneath. So the actual value is where you guys, this um, preview of calculus that I've been telling you about is coming in. Um, because calculus allows us to find the exact area under any curve um, that you can graph. And that is called a definite integral. I-N-T-E-G-R-A-L. Integral. So there's a symbol for the definite integral. and We make this kind of elongated S shape. And there's going to be a number at the top of the s, and that number is always whatever the top x value um, that you are kind of finding the area between is going to be. Then there's a bottom number at the bottom of that elongated s for the integral, and that is going to be the bottom x value. So you go from the bottom x value to the top x value of thinking about where you're starting to find the area and where you're ending up finding the area. So if we look back at our um, diagram here, you can see that that starting value is at 3, and the ending value is at 7. So we're going to take those numbers and stick them onto the definite integral here. 3 at the bottom and 7 at the top. So we have the integral from 3 to 7, is how we would say this, of, and then this space right here is where our function is going to be located. So that's the negative x squared plus 10x minus 20. That's basically the name of the parabola that you're putting in there. And then you also want to attach a dx on the end of that notation because you're integrating horizontally um, from left to right, not from top to bottom. So to calculate this definite integral, there are several ways we can do it. One of the ways we can do it, and we can check it especially, is by using the calculator. So to do that, we're going to start in the y equals window on our calculator, and we're going to enter in the function. Negative x squared plus 10x and minus 20 is going to be entered into our y1 spot. And let's just check what that graph looks like to make sure we've got the right one. Yep, looks like we do. We've got an upside down parabola. Looks like we've got from 3 to 7 that we want to find, so we're, we're good there. Now what we're going to do is use the built-in definite integral function on the calculator, which you can find in your math menu. Just hit the math key. And then you want to scroll all the way down into the bottom set of possibilities and choose option number 9, which says fn int. When you do that, you're going to get the setup of there's your elongated S, S, and then you're going to fill in the bottom and the top values that you're integrating from. So there's the 3, and we're going to integrate with respect to X. And we want to go from 3 to 7. And then if you want to, you can retype all of the negative X squared plus 10X 
minus 20 if you want to, or you can take a shortcut through the calculator's memory by pressing the VARS key and then the Y VARS key and then sticking in under function Y1. And there's our answer, which is going to be 14.6 repeating. That's, that's the actual value for the area under the curve. So we were right. It is an underestimation. Okay, so now we're going to go and try a new problem. This one's your on-your-own problem. I'm going to stick with a quadratic equation, but this time we're going to be having it point up, and I want you to find the area under the curve between 1 and 5 for the equation y, x, y equals excuse me, x squared minus 6x plus 10. So we still have four trapezoids that we're finding. We can substitute 2 and figure out that the height there, for instance, is 2, so that makes sense. I'm going to do that for all the other ones. Remember, you can look at um, the values over in this side window here to find the base lengths. The base lengths at x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are right there for you. Keep in mind the heights of each of these trapezoids can be comparable to what we had before because we don't have any skinnier trapezoids than one unit in width. So I'd like you to use the previous method that you had in the first example. I want you to approximate, like we said, the area using trapezoids. And I also want you to answer the question, is it an over approximation or an under approximation again this time? And then finally, I want you to use your calculator to figure out what the exact value of the area under the curve will be. So take a second, pause the video now, and do that out. And now here are your answers. The approximate area should be 10 for the trapezoidal method. And here's those trapezoids drawn in again. We connect the tops of the trapezoids this time. I hope you can see the red line being above where the blue curve is. The red line is the trapezoid, and the blue line is the curve. So we're actually including more area this time, unlike before. So this time it's an overestimation. And the exact value, if we follow the process through on our calculator, you can either delete the first function or stick it into the second. I'm going to stick it into the second slot in your y equals screen. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 10, put in for y2. And I'm going to take off the graph of the first one, so we only see one there. Just by hitting enter on the equal sign, that'll delete it. There's my graph, and I'm going to press second and entry to put what I just came up with, but I'm going to go back and kind of edit the different pieces here. So this time we're doing the area between 1 and 5, and we're going to delete out the y1 and through the vars key and the y vars menu here and the function menu we're going to pull in from the calculator's memory y2 instead and so the exact value for the definite integral from 1 to 5 is going to be 9.3 repeating how'd you do at this point we're at the end of the video so Make sure that you um, are ready for a question like this on a bonus part of your next area quiz. Thank you for pushing the bounds of the required work for you in this unit. Great work, guys. Thanks.